Let's jump to this story from the Post Millennial. Breaking. Arizona Supreme Court revives Carrie Lake claim on signature verification. So uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give you the simple version. Carrie Lake filed numerous claims. They were dismissed by a lower court. Carrie Lake appealed. And one very important component, one of the most important, made it through. Now, the corporate press is saying, Carrie Lake mostly loses appeal. If you're filing a lawsuit like this, you don't just say, here's my one complaint. You get as many as you can and throw them all out there, scattershot, and then see which ones stick. And Carrie Lake got one. Signature verification. When the, 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 the argument is, uh, uh, not just in Carrie Lake's case, but in Trump as well, the argument is too many signatures got accepted that should not have. That many of these probably didn't match, but they were letting them through anyway. When Carrie Lake sued, they said, this is a procedure question and you should have sued before the election. Well, now the appellate court, a Supreme Court has said, no, how would she sue unless there was something done that she can sue over? Go back and redo this. For all we know, the lower court just kicks it out again. But it's entirely possible that they're forced to take it up. The, the, the issue with Carrie Lake and with any, anyone involved in this is that every single person in politics, save like, I don't know, five, 10 people. Okay, to be fair, maybe 50. Uh, they're cowards. They're all cowards. I'm, I've, I've been, uh, I feel like DeSantis is a letdown. I feel like he is too weak. Carrie Lake is strong. Trump is strong. I like that. There are a decent number of strong people in Congress. Matt Gates standing up to Kevin McCarthy was absolutely fantastic. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, despite the fact Lord Marjorie Taylor Greene was in favor of Kevin McCarthy, she's stood up on a lot of issues. But I look at these, these, these court cases and these judges and everyone's just like, oh man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be involved. So what I, I guess I would say is, you know, aside from this story, I feel like a big thing that's being revealed right now is just how cowardly so much of our society and, and government is, how many individuals are, probably why people voted for Trump, probably why people like Carrie Lake. They're, they want someone who's finally just going to stand up and say, screw off. By the way, cowardice in politics is not a new phenomenon. Oh, yeah. Yes. But, I, but, I, but I feel like it's, it's more widespread and, and culturally ingrained at this point. Yeah. Like, I, I, maybe I'm just wrong, but I kind of feel like if you go back 100 years, you find most people weren't cowardly, although they were cowards. Maybe it's more exposed because I think, I think you know, we, we complain about all the downsides of social media. I think one of the powerful things that happens is that you realize that most politicians are telling you what you want to hear without ever saying anything. And you can dig a little bit deeper now and you realize that they're empty suits. So when we see someone who appears to be saying what they actually think, and I think Carrie Lake is absolutely one of those people, um, that in and of itself, regardless of what she's saying, is appealing to people because she's actually speaking what she thinks. And she's and not. that's attractive. And she's not dropping it. I mean, it would have been easy for her to say, like, this is corrupt and terrible, and then quietly fade into the background, right? I mean, she must be spending tons of money on this legal battle, and yet she thinks it's worth it. She's standing by what she said, that she needs to stand up for Arizona's voting integrity, and so she's going to push it for as long as she can. And I I think there is something refreshing about that, right? It's, it's very different than someone saying, like, this was stolen from me or this was unfair and then kind of doing nothing. I think a lot of voters are very sick of the inaction, the fact that they don't fall through with anything. Yeah, but... Oh, what are you saying? No, it's, it's kind of telling that when you search Carrie Lake, you see a, a host of articles like robots. Um, she mostly loses, I think. Yep. That's the phrase. That every article says the same thing. That tells me that she probably accomplished something. Yep. Because how do you mostly lose? If your goal is to get an argument in, they're like, well, she mostly lost. It's like, is the, the lawsuit moving forward? Yes. So she didn't lose. Well, she lost a lot of them, but the lawsuit is moving forward. It's like, okay, well, that sounds like her lawsuit is moving forward. Mostly to me. rejected. Yeah. 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 AP has uh, Arizona That's court so declines funny. most of Lake's appeal over governor's race. And it's like, but they took something. You're trying yeah. to frame it as, you know, she's this crazy wacko, don't, but don't worry, she's being subdued. And really, you know, the issues that matter and the ones that could make a difference are, are being moved forward. I think a lot of these... The cowardice in politics comes from people being able to communicate from behind a keyboard and a computer in a locked room. Like a lot of the stuff people say to each other in social media, they would never say to each other and face to face. I, I look, man, the DeSantis response to the Trump indictment stuff was like getting a bucket of water splashed in the face. I don't care. A lot of people are like, you know, DeSantis said, I don't know what goes into paying a porn star hush money or whatever. I don't care that he said that. 
I care about the fact that he said, I'm not getting involved in this instead of saying F you instead of just telling telling these these lunatics to, to shove to screw themselves. He probably figures Trump's pissed off so many people and he's got no chance at winning. And if he gets involved and gets on his side, he'll just be lumped into that. Cowardice. And no chance at winning. But I mean, exactly. he's not wrong that Trump has pissed off way more people than he needed to. But it does. But he could have said, look, it's not about Donald Trump. You don't have to like the guy. I've got my differences with him. He calls me a meatball. But the idea that a six year old misdemeanor would warrant extradition from my state is laughable. So do not even try it. And he's like, come on, where the, ball, where the ball's at? Just, that, I, you know, I just don't see it. That's I, what he should have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It would take him from being just this suit that's sort of towing the line, trying to, to pick up both sides, you know, people who are for Trump and people who are against him and giving him a personality, right? Like he's not willing to take that risk. And that's where you get this fear that he's becoming like a politician. Yes. Right? And, and who is he trying to win over with this, right? The idea is that, well, a lot of people don't like Trump and he, he could win the never Trump or Republicans. Dude, all of the parental rights and education stuff that he's done, he's, they're, they're lying about it. They're saying he's banning books. Mm-hmm. The Lincoln Project's calling him awful and evil. There's nothing to be gained from not like from going the route he's going. It may just be simple. I don't know if he intentionally was trying to avoid being defensive of Trump. The fact is, he does not have it within him to be defensive of hardline principles in that way. So what I when I see DeSantis, I see a guy who, you know, early on, he's got these policy accomplishments. He's a great governor. I still think that's true. And so you believe that here's a guy who gets it. And now what you see over the past few months is, Here's a guy who's vanilla pudding who was given the correct script. He's, he's given the proper playbook. He said, I will execute it because I can un- understand people like mm-hmm. this. But then when it comes time to stand in front of the flames, he goes, oh, <laughs> too much for me there, buddy. He doesn't seem like the guy who sent illegal immigrants to Martha's Vineyard anymore. He seems I mean, like someone else. I don't know. That's, I, a, that's a good point. I, I think that's too far. I think it was a tactical mistake. And, and I think he can Martha's recover Vineyard from thing? it. I think oh, you think the, the, the Trump statement stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the issue, though, is like the Martha's Vineyard thing was was masterfully done. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of stuff you want to see. But I kind of I, 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 I half agree with you. I think there's an opportunity for him to come back and, and have that strong voice. But I kind of do feel like this was a bit revealing. And it's not so much about can he recover from it so much, though, as we've learned a little bit about right. him. He did. But, a, but we'll see. We'll see. He did a show with Glenn Beck that was pretty enlightening. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's worth watching. I only saw it so far about 10 minutes of it. In fact, I'm there realizing I should watch the entire thing because it was like, oh, I see the humanity in this guy now. He's a tactical guy. He's like a, a JAG. He was a Navy lawyer, JAG guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, he knows when to speak, when not to speak, when to let your enemy. If your enemy's making a mistake, don't stop him. That's probably what he's thinking with Trump right now. He's like, dude, this guy's foot in his mouth. He deserves this. He paid off a prostitute that he had sex with while he was married and running for president. Like, let him burn. Let him let him, let him deal with it. I'm not getting involved in this crap. Uh, he wants to win the presidency. I, I Look, man, if if... DeSantis is the nominee. He's got my vote. I like the guy. I think he's I think he's doing really well. I think he's a great governor. I think he'll be a great leader. And I think he's substantially better than anything anyone else has to offer. But I understand why people like Trump, because Trump, you know, you know, this is the thing why I said before that DeSantis might be a good VP is because DeSantis has what Trump doesn't. Trump has what DeSantis doesn't. Trump has that like boastful arrogance about him. He is that guy who's going to be like, don't you try it. Don't come at me. It's not happening. And DeSantis is the guy who's going to be like, here's what the people actually want. Here's me telling off the, the you know, the, the, the lockdowns and actually like solving these problems properly. Trump's got the attitude, but DeSantis, DeSantis has the plan. Yeah, so I, like, I can respect that. I think it's, it's tough to say what would have happened, should have, whatever. But I think if DeSantis had been president when COVID struck, that he wouldn't have let Fauci run the show. He would have run the show. I don't know, man. He doesn't, I mean, he's like, he, he knows how to use the system. He, he used his um, state of emergency in Florida and he held it open so that he could reposition funds to make sure that schools couldn't close down. So it was like, yeah, he knew that this COVID crap was an emergency and it was making kids get masked when they were two and three. So he's like, no, the emergency is that kids are getting masked up at four years old. I'm not going to let that happen to kids. Well, that, that, that's, that, that's an interesting question. When it comes to actual policy, is Trump the kind of guy who's going to drop the hammer or is DeSantis? DeSantis is the guy who sent a bunch of migrants to Martha's Vineyard as a powerful statement. Trump's the guy who refused to fire Fauci because he was scared of political backlash. Mm-hmm. So I, it's tough. I man. like the Navy lawyer. I'm gonna. I like the yeah. experience. 
I like having a lawyer in presidency. Obama was a lawyer for better or worse. He knew how to game the system. Be tons of lawyers. Yeah, the, the president. I mean, the, the conversation with uh, Glenn Beck and DeSantis. I, I I did watch it, and that's that's where DeSantis wants to be. But he's struggling with, um, you know, how does he engage Trump? Because he watched everybody get chewed up and spit out. When you when you take on Trump, uh, playing on Trump's turf, Trump's going to kill you. So that's, he's this 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 episode that we're talking about. DeSantis is like, do I engage? Do I disengage? What do I do with this? Because I know what happens to everybody that goes toe to toe with Trump in terms of a, a you know a pissing match. He says that on the that's, show. He talks about that. No, no. Oh, I'm, but that, that, I'm that, putting that, words in his mouth. He's never going to say that out loud. I would love. But to that's hear that, that's kind of what I'm saying is, if it's not going to be Trump, it's got to be someone who can easily go toe to toe with Trump. You know what I mean? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.